Welcome to a video presentation of a section covering the elimination method. The elimination method is the last math method we have that's mathematical anyway, that allows us to solve equations. We do have other methods. We won't cover those though until we start graphing, which will probably be somewhere in the fifth, six weeks, maybe the end of the fourth. All right, you'll sometimes see the elimination re method referred to as the canceling out method, because that's truly what it is. The steps are listed for you in the left-hand column. Step one says to line up the like <laughs> terms. Step two, make x's or y's like in terms of number, but opposite in terms of sign. Step three is to sum. Step four, solve. Step five, resubstitute. And then step six, solve again. <coughs> step one, where it says to line up the like terms. That means you have to line up the x's, you have to line up the y's, and as a result, you would have to line up the lonesome number. Now, does it matter necessarily what order they're in? No. If you've got y to the left of the equal sign and then x and a lonesome number to the right, fine. If you've got x and y on the left and lonesome number on the right, fine. If you've got lonesome number on the left, x and y on the right, fine. Whatever. It doesn't matter what order they're in as long as x's are lined up, y's are lined up, lonesome numbers are lined up. Step two says to make x's or y's like in terms of number, but opposite in terms of sign. So the number in front of either x or y, it doesn't have to be both, it's just got to be one. You've got to make it so that it's the same number in front of x or y, but that the sign in front of them is different. So there's a negative in front of one and a positive in front of the other, a plus sign in front of one and a minus sign in front of the other, whatever. Like in terms of number, opposite in terms of the sum. Once you do that, then you sum. When I say sum, I mean you add up and down, not left to right, because that isn't going to be any good. You add up and down with two equations. Step four, you'll solve the result. And then step five and six are basically what we did with substitution. You're going to plug your first number back in and get the other one. Resubstitute and solve again. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the examples on the board. As you can see, all the examples up there already have everything lined up. X's are lined up, Y's are lined up, loans and numbers are lined up. <laughs> Again, X's are lined up, Y's are lined up, lonesome numbers are lined up. Okay? So we don't have to worry about step one in any of the problems. <coughs> that one's up. All right. Example one. 2X plus 3Y equals 6. 4X minus 3Y equals 12. I just got done saying that step one is already done. We don't even have to worry about that. So really what we're going to start around is step two. Okay. So step two, like in terms of number, opposite in terms of sign. Well, if you take a look in front of the y's here, I've got a three in front of both of the y's. So that's half of what I've got to have. And if you notice, if I cover up the stuff in front, one of them says positive, the other says negative. That's the other thing I have to have. Once you have it set up like that, you can go right into doing the work. Okay. Step three says to sum, and we add up going this way. So, I've got 2x and 4x. I'm going to put those together, and that's going to make 6x. Two x plus four x makes six x. That's all I've done. All right. Now, as far as the y's go, 
I've got 3y and negative 3y. Those cancel each other out. I would have 0y. You know by now that multiplying by 0 doesn't do anything for me. So I'm not even going to bother writing that because it's just going to disappear. Then the last thing I've got to do is the numbers. 6 and the 12. 6 and the 12, of course, make 18. And as far as the equal sign, the equal sign just drops straight down. So 6x equals 18. Okay. So now I've just got to solve that. So I'm going to divide across by 6. And that gives me x equals 3. And I'm halfway done. Now, here's where it changes into doing just like we did with substitution. Now you've got to pick one of the original two equations. So you can choose to work with the first one, or you can choose to work with the second one. Just like substitution, it really doesn't matter, okay? because you're going to get the same answer at the end. So let's just go ahead and pick the first one. 2x plus 3y equals 6. Now, we just learned that x equals 3. So I'm going to change x into a 3. Well, we can simplify that because I've got 2 times 3 there. That's just going to make 6. So I've got 6 plus 3y equals 6. Now you know I want variables on the left. I want lonesome numbers to go to the right, which means this 6 has got to travel over there. So to do that, I'm going to have to subtract it from both sides. <coughs> do that, I get 3y equals 0. Well, we know that 3 times 0 makes 0, so y must be 0. You could divide by 3 and you get the same thing. It's not going to matter. And there's our two answers. 3 comma 0. So substitution is kind of, or elimination is kind of the reverse of substitution in that 